even from behind. But there is a downside. Whips are notoriously difficult to use. Students of Kung Fu are more likely to do themselves an injury with a whip than when learning any other weapon. There's a saying in Chinese martial arts that rather practice the sword or saber than the hook or whip. That's because it's easy to hurt yourself with a whip. In the hands of a kung fu expert, even innocuous domestic objects like chopsticks can be lethal weapons. Because they are unexpected, they are doubly deadly. This is actually a very common type of weapon. It relies on the user's with power, manifest in a straight line to strike at an enemy's body. Throwing a chopstick requires more than simple coordination. Martial artists first concentrate Kung Fu Qi energy in their hand and wrist. When thrown with Kung Fu force, ordinary chopsticks can penetrate a wooden board. In the hands of trained assassins, sharpened metal chopsticks were deadly weapons. The targets for the chopsticks' piercing attacks are the chest, head, and groin. A fan may look harmless, but in the hands of an expert, even it has lethal potential. Fans were a sign of gentility, but in an emergency, an elegant scholar could be transformed into a deadly assassin. Killer fans had sharpened veins to cut and slash the enemy. Fans could also be used defensively, like a bullfighter's cape. And fans could be turned into an effective concealed weapon, able to be taken into places where more obvious weapons could not. Assassins had special fans with razor-sharp blades that could slice as well as a knife. Calligraphy is one of the fine arts of China. But these metal brushes were not used to paint characters. They were used for a far darker art, the martial arts. Cooled dark judge brushes, they had a single purpose, to kill. About 20 centimeters in length, their pointed tips are used for striking. Thrusting is very direct. You just step right at the enemy. Dark judge brushes are mainly used to attack pressure points, the sternum, the heart, the throat, the temples, as well as the eyes are all targets. Small weapons like dark judge brushes are almost always used in pairs. Kung Fu teaches the use of both hands. While one hand distracts the enemy, the other strikes. Dark judge brushes are primarily stealth weapons used to attack unsuspecting opponents. First of all, thrusting. Penetrating is thrusting with even greater lethal effect. Lifting is to first neutralize an opponent's attack before counterattacking. In the hands of an assassin, even everyday household items can become deadly weapons. After the break, strange exotic weapons and the ultimate flying killers. We're counting down China's top 10 lethal weapons. At number 10 are razor-sharp swords and sabers. At number nine are long-range weapons, bows and crossbows. Favorite weapons among soldiers, spears and halberds, come in at eight. At number seven are long weapons, six to eight foot fighting stars. Whips, soft weapons that pack a big punch, are at six. And at number five, 
are common objects lethal in the hands of Kung Fu masters. But some of China's most ingenious weapons were never meant to be seen. Ancient Chinese weapons makers made many important discoveries. Chinese armorers made the first crossbows. Chinese alchemists made the first gunpowder. And Chinese artisans made some of the most sophisticated mechanical weapons the world has ever seen. So-called sleeve arrows are ancient spring-loaded devices that could be hidden within the sleeves of a traditional Chinese gown. Sometimes the tip was even poisoned. Consisting of a metal tube approximately 18 centimeters in length, a miniature arrow is placed inside. A spring-loaded mechanism within the tube shoots the arrow out. The sleeved arrow was very easy to use. It's shot by a spring. You place the arrow inside the tube, cock it, and then set the spring, activate this trigger, and the arrow shoots out from the tube. The sleeve arrow's mechanical principle involves a spring at the bottom of the tube, on top of which is a metal plate. A triggering device called the butterfly's wing holds back the arrow head. When the trigger is pulled, the mini arrow is released. Anran, the collector of unusual and exotic weaponry, demonstrates how to shoot the sleeve arrow. At short range, the sleeve arrow was surprisingly accurate. Ancient records say that sleeve arrows could hit targets up to 30 paces away. There are many similar kinds of concealed weapons. Mechanical range concealed weapons like this are usually sleeves arrows, needle tubes, and of course the flying guillotine. All were mainly used for assassination. All sorts of strange and exotic weapons flourished in China. Using a weapon that doesn't look like a weapon has an important advantage. Effective offense is often based on doing what one's enemy least expect. Sometimes that means using a concealed weapon. At other times, it can mean using exotic weapons, such as the twin deer antler blade. Antler-shaped blades are used in pairs, one for each hand. Each deer antler blade has three sharp points and seven cutting edges. In combat, the deer antler blades are compact, sharp, and versatile. They can be used to pinion an enemy. With multiple cutting edges, they can slice the enemy from any direction. And the three sharp points can inflict terrible wounds. An even more strangely shaped weapon is the ring or wheel, a metal hoop with sharp blades around the perimeter. <laughs> 